if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. This video includes timestamps, so check out the description below if you want to bounce ahead and just grab the info that you want. Hey, check out this little reenactment that I'm going to do before I do the how-to video I got, okay? Hey there, yeah, I'm a local Phoenix. Uh, I'm a young kid uh, trying to turn some wrenches. I went to uh, trade school and I really messed up. I stripped a uh, head bolt my block. Can you help me out? Just, what, what, you want them YouTube mechanics? I mean, what, like, you think you can work on your own cars? Like, this is what, what you get for working on your own stuff. You know, we, we're not going to fix your messes. <laughs> You're what'd you do oh you must be one of them youtube mechanics you know trying to work on stuff that you this is what you get you're gonna pay me thousands of dollars to fix your mess up and that's the way it is yeah and pull your motor and bring it in you ever find yourself in that place where maybe uh you just feel like people are talking down to you or just not giving you solutions and you kind of wonder well is it because i'm young or is it because i'm old is it because i'm female i'm male i'm straight i'm gay i'm trans i'm blue i'm white i'm asian i'm indian what, whatever that case would look like uh Man, how to wrench has a different way of viewing things, and I'll tell you, it hasn't always been perfect. I mean, when I started teaching early on, I think I fell in a little what I call the shame game too, of like, "What you don't know that?" or, or whatnot. So I, I really grew to know that I don't like the way that feels, and I'm, I want to be open. And I think why I love teaching so much is to give people that opportunity to have a bad first day. And so if you ever find yourself in a position like this where you thought oh, what am I going to do? This is really bad. I've been there. Most of us have ever turned wrenches have been there. So we want to welcome you to How to Wrench. And our videos are really based on the fact that you might know a little and you might know a lot. So everyone is welcome here. So this is a cool little uh, video. It has a nice outcome of how we were able to help a, a young fella that fell into a position where they were like, you know, pull your motor or they wouldn't do it at all. He was really, really struggling. This vehicle has been down for a long time trying to find a solution. They asked me, once again, never claimed to be a car expert, but I know about tools and nuts and bolts. And so I went and took a look and I got to thinking this cannot possibly be the first time somebody's done this on this really cool kit. We're going to review that tool, show you how it worked out and, uh, and help a young kid out to keep him excited about turning wrenches. And, uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to end up with one of our YouTube shirts. So anyway, make it a great day. Enjoy the video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so yet. Let's get to it. Hey friends, Shane from HowToWrench.com. And I got a request from a friend of the family to help with an automotive job. And I never claim to be an automotive expert, but I do think I know my way around tools. And we have a super sick project here. This is gonna be a pretty badass Cabrero. And uh, you've been having a lot of fun building this car up, huh? A little too much. Yeah. And you went to West Mac, right? I did. So if you if y'all haven't heard about it, I'm on a, I help out with the motorcycle side of that here at West Mac. And every time I talk to someone that's went through one of them programs, I mean, it's been awesome. So here we have a graduate, you know, out living life, loving uh, life. And look, he's uh, getting after it. I mean, put some high performance parts on here. This thing's pretty cool. But we ran into a situation when he went to torque his heads on that. Uh, one of the bolts uh, pulled threads. I know first people, first thing people are going to ask is like, was he using a torque wrench, all that? This kid, no offense, sorry, I shouldn't probably call you a kid, but uh, is super organized, really digging it, love what he's got going on, and this shit just happens, right? I mean, it sucks and it is what it is. But you went to a few different like uh, machine shops and everybody was telling you like, pull the motor and bring it in. Yeah. And they reached out to me and thought, is there anything? And I really didn't know either, except to use that good old Google and start looking around. And we found what I expected to find was a solution. This is way too popular of an engine that's been around forever. And you always gotta ask yourself when you get into trouble, like, am I the first person to ever run into this? It's pretty hard to have a first experience anymore because everything's just been an evolution. And so, as expected, there was this unbelievable kit for uh, perfectly aligning up the tap and putting in way better than a Healy coil because originally we were talking a Healy coil and I was like, love Healy coils. Just had to do one last night, matter of fact, an engine I was doing. But when it comes to cylinder heads, exhaust, uh, I'm a huge fan of an insert uh, style repair. And so we found this kit. We kind of want to give them a shout out here. This is the kit, right? Yeah. I'll even give you a refrigerator magnets. Yeah, there you go. 
Um, but this thing's pretty wild. You're going to see here, we're going to use it here in a second, but it comes with an alignment jig we're going to mount up. It comes with multiple taps. They even went to the extent of giving you the tap to start that's shorter so it's not, you know, going to walk out on you. Fantastic instructions, by the way. Uh, then once you get deep enough, you could switch to this longer tap now that you've got a good, you know, guide started in there. And then we can get as deep as we need to go. Was this your blowgun? Yeah. Or this is yours. But it did come with thread cutting uh, oil. It came with a uh, thread locker. I mean, this thing's wild. Super, super wild. So I brought just a few hand tools that I like, like tap sockets. I'm a big fan of those. And uh, here's the thread insert. Uh, and some of the other taps that came with were not for this model, but it was was all included. So super thorough instructions. So I'm going to quit yapping, and we're going to go ahead, and we are going to fix that hole. I really dig the tape job you did, too. Pretty sick, man. All right, Peyton, let's do this. All right, per the instructions, we're to use this small spacer on our motor, use an existing head bolt. This one's going to grab on to good threads, and then this is a, a really cool tapered guide that's going to go in here and uh, perfectly set the jig up for us to then switch this out and do the drill process. So we thread this in here. If you have a second hand like I do, we're going to use it. We're going to take advantage of it because what we want to do is have me push the block down and the pin down and then uh, I'll let you switch and start grabbing that. So this creates that really nice flat surface. And we're not torquing this uh, adapter either. It's just a uh, tight fit, it said, per the instructions. Okay. All right. And now what we have is a hole ready to drill a hole in a block installed in the car. <laughs> no stress whatsoever, right? No. All right. Now that uh, this does come out nice and easy, let's give it a little more snug. Perfect. Okay. Feeling pretty good. All right. So that is first part. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. So what we want to do next, we just don't want to drill this wildly. We want to think about how far we do want to drill this just because we haven't used this kit before. So what I like to do is put a, I'm going to measure this. Uh, I believe it said to go two inches. We should look in the instructions again. But I like to do is just, uh, if my goal is to go two inches uh, beyond this block, I'd take and mark this off. So it might be the whole depth of this, but let's see. All right, the recommendation was to go two inches and then quit and then uh, check your work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my caliper here, zero it. I'm gonna switch to inch, and I'm gonna go to uh, the thickness of this clamp. Get onto the head here. Oh, I'm in a hole. That'll good. Okay, I'm gonna hit zero there, and then I'm gonna add two inches. So the thickness of that clamp and two inches has us going right actually i'm not even gonna have to tape it but you see where it goes right to the end of the spiral yep so when we hit that we know we're going to be two inches and then we can blow it out actually we're going to use another cool tool a little vacuum tool we'll suck it out and then we can go down further so pretty sweet all right so you can get a little can you tell if i'm in the camera yeah you are All right, point of no return, ready? Okay, so I want you to watch that bracket, make sure we're feeling good. Am I going the right way? Yep, upside down here. <clears throat> okay, you wanna make sure we're started on the head, not drilling the bushing, right? Mm -hmm. Let's get that a little tighter. I saw it moving a little which might be normal, you know, but. Okay, that's good. 
Just making sure. You got one shot to do it right and one shot to do it wrong. Okay. Okay, just per their instructions, we're gonna quit it to two inches. Yep, you see all why it's GM in the drill. This is a cool tool I want to show you. It's a vacuum uh, off uh, using air, compressed air, instead of blowing it. Um, it works really good on the surface. It wouldn't go down to the full depth of the hole, so he still needed a blow gun. But especially when you're doing cleanup or whenever possible, if you can vacuum versus you know blowing it, uh, it's a lot less risky and less dangerous for you as well of, of having ricochet. So yeah, you, you got you, you're always gonna need a blow gun. But this is a real cool tool, and I'll put an Amazon link down below. But it's great for uh, like uh, getting in uh, crevices and areas instead of just like you know wedging it into something. So use it as you can. So I can't stress enough the pro tips of stop, take your time, look at what you're doing. So take little breaks and check things out. We, uh, we're gonna keep on drilling. And then uh, it's, it's really good to have this extra set of hands as well to keep some of the lines and stuff out of the way so your drill doesn't catch. And then you'll notice here in a little bit that we uh, actually, uh, oh, don't forget lube, lots of lube, lots and lots of lube. Uh, you're gonna notice here in a little bit that we uh, discovered there was a uh, an open, hole that wasn't taped off too so just checking your area out really really well will save you a lot of problems so there we just kissed it down to where we thought was a good uh, point you're gonna see it here in a little bit later in the video that um, that we actually need to go deeper yet but hey baby steps you'll get through it and then uh, let's keep on moving we're getting close we're gonna switch over to the tap now camera still going so the next step is we're going to switch uh, to the bushing that supports and starts the guiding of the tap now once you get through uh, the full length threads of the tap this bushing doesn't serve you anymore we learned that later on but um, absolutely necessary to get started really nice and straight now if you've never seen uh, these before these are tap sockets they come in a get these in a whole bunch of sizes all the way down to small ones they are instrumental in making this so much easier than using a big t-handle and then you get the ratcheting so if you're in a tight spot I'm a big fan of using like a t-handle we just didn't have a three-quarter inch required for this with me so that's what we got all right we're gonna put some uh, some lube on here put a little in the hole that. And like the instruction said, we're doing the short one first. And when doing, when cutting threads like this, did you do these in school at all? No. No, never did? Okay, so... I want to make a couple of points here. If you're not familiar with, uh, you know, how to use a tap, I mean, really uh, watch some of our videos in our faster playlist, or you know, just get on YouTube, find some good uh, content creators, and make sure you get a better understanding of that this this video is really about how to use this kit and how it, it fixes this uh, what seemed like impossible problem uh, avoiding pulling the engine. So, uh, you know. A little bit surprised, like uh, where you know Peyton had said that you know they, this is something they didn't learn in school, but. On the other hand, not super shocked because it's just not such a common thing taught uh, in the schools uh, anymore. But, you know, uh, real quickly, I mean, you'll see I'm going forward and I'm backing up. I'm going forward and I'm backing up. That's because I'm, I'm uh, going to make sure that that material doesn't just bind up in a pile, especially when you hit the bottom of the hole. We don't want to have all that material just stuck in the bottom 
the tap has nowhere to go and we and we don't want to bind it up with so much material that we could take a chance of the tap breaking in the head as well so just a couple little pro tips for you there and then uh like i said you're just going to see us i'm going to fast forward this to, to speed things up but we're just going to keep doing this and keep doing this until a point we're ready to uh to see if we've uh hit bottom as far as we drilled and while he's doing that we are at the point where per the instructions, we've threaded the uh, insert down in there. And you can see here, it's got this little notch on here and this is the uh, installation tool. And it says to put it in uh, by hand first without the thread locker, just to make sure you don't have to keep going. We have had to go back and forth a couple of different times and work on getting this deeper so that we can get the installed height from the cylinder uh, base. Uh, to the deck surface is what they call it to the top of this insert they give a specification for your model in this case it was 55 millimeters that the the top of this needs to be setting at the reason that's really important Peyton give me a head bolt the reason that's really important is you look this kit is so intentional that it's going to use up all of it for that that clamping so if you didn't have this deep enough what would happen is you would end up hitting right here and getting a false torque because you don't have threads. This isn't neck down. So if, if you know, if we were like this, we'll be better off than this. So it has to be deep enough. And that was a real concern for us as we were, we, we were actually only at 25, I think 25 millimeters or so at our first uh, check. And we realized, oh, we got to get that thing deeper down in there. So that's what we're doing right now is we're getting the tool out of the way and we're going to measure down from there to the, to this edge and see if we're at that uh, 55 millimeter spec. feel we definitely are bottomed so it did it did fit and now we had set this up and look we have a little bit a little bit more to go actually so that's the point we gotta we gotta get this right so we gotta we got a couple more threads we gotta get after on that all right, so here's the thing, you know, a couple things we discovered is is once we had that tap all the way down there, we really didn't need the uh, fixture anymore, number one. And number two, uh, we probably were just way over cautious, but no regrets. This beginning to process end for us took about three hours, but that was screwing around, making videos, you know, chit-chatting a little bit. So, um, like I said, I, I think we could have done a better job of doing uh, more measuring and, and really figuring something out in a few less steps, but this is, this is how we did it. All right, here we are taking out the tap again uh, after grabbing a few more millimeter to hit that 55 millimeter spec. So I thought I'd just let the camera run to uh, show like up close the full installation of, of an insert. Let's uh, blow that out again. Here, I'll do it since I got glasses on. lube up the insert just make it easy right now this will be loctite on the final but like I said I start here with this key like that uh, let's go ahead and take our uh, block off actually All right. uh, we're gonna... look at that, that looks kind of wild it's coming in from that surface doesn't it <laughs> Oh, those threads are great.
And the reason we need that brake cleaner was when we go for final assembly, we got to get everything just all the way back to nominal, completely dry. If there's any oil on there, that thread locker is never going to be able to cure and do what it's supposed to do. So. feel boom perfect look at that dude awesome give me some knuckles <laughs> cool all right so now we need to uh take this back out the next steps are really crucial for the success of this repair, and that is super clean. So get some brake cleaner in there, get really good and dry, blow it out, get all the old chips out, get it really super, super clean and dry. And then you have to remember to do the insert uh, as well. If you if you only did the uh, block and the insert had oil on it, it still wouldn't allow the thread locker to cure. So super clean and dry and ready to receive this nice and easy. Oh, Jesus. That's good. You just rub it in with my finger? Uh, just get it away from the top, like more that direction, yeah. Perfect. That's good. Okay. Not bleeding. <laughs> Luckily. Goes in my butter. Good luck doing that with a Healy coil. <laughs> Four inches deep. It's really some nicely machined components for this. Oh yeah. want to check our work let's check our depth make sure just something hasn't changed right all good Boom. then the big thing is to make sure and let it cure so read your thread lockers you know typically you have a cure rate of like this one here says uh, approximately 20 minutes and it's fully cured within 24 hours at the point of a cylinder head being such a critical mass component I wouldn't go in to torque that bolt until tomorrow. I'd let it sit the 24 hours. So um, that is it, man. What do you think? Super fun. Cool kit. Um, let's get a little overview of all this again here too. So what's what stands out from this? Anything new from like lessons you learned in school or anything? Really useful for, I don't know, usually when they wouldn't teach us, uh, they didn't teach us this kind of stuff because it's not the most common type of thing, but it's a really cool thing to know because it could happen on a lot of things, especially these aluminum blocks that they're using now. Yeah. You know, in the power sports industry, we, we've had, you know, aluminum blocks forever. So it's been pretty textbook for us to, to have to know how to do this. But I'll be honest with you is that all over the country, anything to do with fabrication has been pulled out of curriculum. They're pretty much figuring out, we only have so many hours in a day and they're going to teach you tires, brakes, you know, uh, some basic fuel, electrical, things like that. But the, the stuff like this that they say go to a machine shop, in the real world, it's not that easy because you get answers like you got. Oh, yeah, pull your engine, bring it in. We'll, we'll fix it. And you're like, wow. I mean, think of the work to pull the engine. Now, this what this kit cost? Four fifty, you know, to your door, and at first, you know, that kind of your butt cheeks tighten up, and you think, oh, and you know, you look at the original Healy coil kit at thirty bucks or something, and it's it's just not the same. You know, what this allowed us to do is to really work with constant. Now, let's just be honest. I was nervous. You know, were you? I was definitely nervous. 
you were definitely nervous too. And I've been term wrenches for a long time. So we took our time. How many times do you think we read the directions? 20. Yeah. Uh, we just, we really worked through this and I can't encourage that enough for do-it-yourselfers. I'm really transparent on on what I'm really good at and, and what I want to be careful with. And when it comes to using a kit, and I would call this a trick, you know what I mean? This, uh, because, you know, the, the quote unquote s- standard manual way would be to pull the motor and take it to a machine shop. So anytime you're using someone else's, you know, idea or kit, you know, make sure and really study it thoroughly. This would be a big mess up uh, if you did it wrong. But I'm super stoked about this. This was a fun little project uh, for me as well. And uh, we'll put links below to this, uh, this cool kit. And uh, we'll let you get to putting the rest of your car back together. <laughs> Hey, watch for a future video. He says he's going to let me know. You've got a supercharger coming for this? Yep, brand new Whipple. Yeah, and so you said there's something special about the size? Yeah, it's the brand new 3-liter three, three that they're just releasing. Uh, I guess it hasn't even come out fully. It's supposed to come out this month, so I'm supposed to receive that. So this car, as it sits from the factories, how much horsepower? I think 455. And you're at, without the supercharger, what do you think you're at? 500. 500, okay. And with the supercharger, what are you going to be? Without blowing up my engine between 650 to 700. Woo! I want to go for a ride. <laughs> Need to put it on track, man. All right, man. Hey, everybody, if you haven't done so, make sure and like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll take a few photos from just assembling this, drop it in at the end of the video. But as always, keep wrenching. Mm-hmm.